Today we'll discuss the topic enforcement. Uh, as you can see on the cartoon, it's there are many compliance-driven companies which work along the inspectors very well. There are some countries uh, and uh, companies where they would like to conceal a little bit. So it's all about where are you established, what are you doing, and do you want to comply or not. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll see and we'll uh, discuss today uh, with Sylvia Daim uh, and Volker Sobala. Sylvia is the Deputy Director General um, of the National Institute for Chemical Safety. And since 2011, uh, Sylvia, you're also chairing the uh, Forum of Enforcement at the European Chemical Agency. Uh, Volker is the Head of Global Product Stewardship at uh, Evonik, also for many years already. Uh, enforcement is very dear for me because, uh, as uh, Sylvia at least knows, I was involved in the establishment of the forum. That was 2006. You're, we're currently eight years um, uh, further away from that point in time. So, Sylvia, how has it run, the forum? Well, uh, I think uh, in the past years, forum has evolved a lot. Uh, do what, uh, what is still relevant is uh, that I think REACH is still one of the most complex legislation around, not just uh, for chemical safety or chemical uh, regulations, but in general. So that means that uh, it's, uh, it's really a challenge for industry and for inspectors as well. The current priorities uh, are set out in the multi-annual work program of the forum. Still, one of the main priorities is uh, agreeing on and implementing a harmonized reach enforcement projects. That's still a priority issue for the forum. Apart from reach enforcement projects, what I can highlight is the training of the inspectors and developing methods and tools for the inspectors, which is really an important issue for us as well. And working on the so-called interlinks project, which is the cooperation between the various authorities, in particular between ACA and member state authorities, member state competent authorities and NEAs, those are the priorities. Okay, for and I remember reading uh, on the REF3 that you will also, besides the normal inspectors, you would uh, include customs. Uh, and I believe, uh, Volker, you had some experience with that already? Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, I think, um, first of all, the idea to include customs in the uh, REF3 project is a good idea because then we know what uh, kind of substances, what kind of mixtures, what kind of articles are coming from non-EU countries into uh, EU. Um, but um, it does not, from my point of view, um, is sufficient to just include customs. Instead, we need to have them better trained. What would you, as an expert on having enforcement brought up on you, see as a key difference between the various member states uh, regarding REITs inspections? Some are just focusing on pre-registration numbers, on registration numbers. Some others um, have their hobby horses with regard to the safety data sheet. Um, some others are um, primarily focusing um, on worker safety. Uh, to be honest, if you uh, refer to the bigger chemical companies, um, we have the most sa uh, safest workplaces in the world. Uh, chemical industry is doing a lot and all what we as a bigger company, and also you can uh, just look at the peer group uh, uh, around uh, uh, Europe at least, um, what we can provide are um, those uh, steel pipes, uh, clean facilities, uh, uh, the perfect uh, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, automatic filling stations and all these kind of things. Enforcement is a member state uh, responsibility. Germany is a federal state with uh, 16 uh, Bundesländer, I believe. <laughs> uh, that sounded very complex. Uh, yeah. Is it as complex as it sounds or is it more simple than I expect? To be honest, I don't think that is uh, really an issue. Um, in Germany, we have the Black, which means it's a Bundes, uh, a Bund, uh, Länder Arbeitsgemeinschaft uh, Chemikaliensicherheit. That means it's a it's a working group um, uh, provide or supporting the Ministry of Environment of the different uh, 16 uh, federal states. And what they are do is uh, they they know that issue and uh, they're doing their best in order to get a harmonized approach with regard to reach inspections. Mm -hmm. But one more thing is that uh, Germany makes it sure that uh, the Bundesländer are also represented at the forum meetings. Sylvia, the REF3 Phase 1 report I read 
uh, talked about uh, different action points you like <coughs> industry to take. Could you yep. talk about that a little bit? The uh, investigation showed that uh, a higher non-compliance level can be identified with the small and medium-sized enterprises. If uh, an SME, a small and medium-sized enterprise, a company, is a member of uh, any of these uh, different chemical associations, they get support. Uh, we have a sort of a help desk, we have FAQs, um, uh, we have also uh, those training sessions, all these kind of things. Can we as inspectors urge small and medium-sized companies to uh, search for their associations, their industry representatives, uh, maybe join one of those associations because that would be the best approach for them to yeah, get support? I think this is a very good point you are mentioning, uh, but the joining is the problem. And uh, from that point of view, I would say it is a good idea if you as um, yeah, officials could say um, if you would like to improve your skills uh, in order to be more compliant that you probably are for the time being, then uh, try to seek uh, a membership of a corresponding chemical association. Another issue was identified that only representatives show quite high non-compliance levels and uh, I think that's, that's something that needs to be addressed. What can industry do when they think another company is not registered or free riding? Well, to be honest, we, we cannot do so much because we are no a poli not a police. What we do is uh, that we go to the authorities and say, okay, we have some indication that the corresponding substance XYZ is probably not registered and uh, so please have a look at that. Sylvia, do you think that enforcement authorities can give support in this process to industry? Some member states do have even phone numbers or dedicated email address when, where companies can give a yeah. signal or give an indication to authorities. Some other authorities would be ready to accept letters or emails with indications and follow up on those mm -hmm. if it is possible. Not necessarily will give an answer to the company. And then there are certain other um, member states which have their very strong priorities and strategies and uh, enforcement steps what they do and they just strictly follow that. At the European Chemical Agency, not so much the forum but the agency itself, uh, if they see a non-compliance uh, in the stage of dossier evaluation they can inform the member state competent authorities that there is a non-compliance by the so-called SONC, the statement of non-compliance. Is industry happy with this procedure, Volker? Well, definitely not. <laughs> I was um, expecting that also. <laughs> <laughs> well, we think it's not appropriate um, to go with this, um, yeah, let's say, strong uh, a shot like uh, a song uh, right from the beginning. Instead, we would recommend to first um, get in contact with the registrant. And, and no, I don't want to speak on behalf of ECHA, mm. that of course ECHA sees it as the end of a procedure. There was the decision-making yep. procedure where the company had the right to, uh, to intervene and the decision was adopted uh, on compliance check or TPE or testing proposals and uh, there was a possibility to appeal that decision. Um, it was agreed and then there was non-compliance in, in one year or in 18 months mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that and that's the end of the story. Final question to both of you. Uh, what would you consider uh, as the key provisions for the coming years uh, as focus for enforcement activities? CLP is something definitely that we need to address and the forum is to have a pilot project on CLP just to confirm that one. Authorization again um, that is something very new for the time being but for forum I think it's high time to start to deal with it so we gain some experience in the early stages mm -hmm. when we are not going to be stringent with our uh, enforcement actions. Registration uh, remains an issue. Uh, I think that's that's at least for the SMEs. Yeah, yes. at least yeah. for the yeah. SMEs. Yeah. 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 And maybe one more thing, uh, SVHC obligations without the authorization thing. Um, yes, I have to agree with most <laughs> of uh, what Silver was saying. Uh, authorization, um, we are struggling for an uh, authorization light, certainly because the requirements are very, very high. And uh, with regard to enforcement within the EU, we certainly have to go for a level playing field. Very nice concluding remark, I would mm -hmm. say. Thank you for your insights. Now, maybe enforcement is not completely harmonized yet, mm -hmm. but I'm very happy to see that compliance-driven companies and enforcement authorities have established a harmonious relationship. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.